when you linked up with Rich Gang, man, mm-hmm. what was that experience like? Because, see, you were already a hood rich official in this thing. Yeah. When you added the Rich Gang to it, everybody in the city understood that Swamp had to go to another level again. What the hell was going on with that I was swamp? bubbling. Like, I want to go back to Rich Gang because I was bubbling. Remember me. I was the guy. <laughs> I was Boys in the Hoods DJ. Yeah, facts. Official DJ. Come on. I was Gorilla, um, Gorilla Zoe official DJ. Come on. I was Crime Mobs DJ. Come on. I was with Gucci. <laughs> I'm I'm saying, with I was you. running around with Scooter. I was already DJing Shorty Low, D4L. That's right. I was already DJing to the, around the masses to build a brand. Mm-hmm. The Rich Gang just only made sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was working with Quan in the beginning. Rest yeah. in peace, Teezy. Yeah. I did his first ever mixtape. Rich Homie Quan. Yeah. Rest in peace, Teezy. Yeah. He, I was talking to him. He got killed at a club when I was supposed to meet him. Damn. What the, I got it. I don't want to tell Rich Homie Quan's story. He still hasn't said it. But I was there in the beginning. Yeah. Thug, I was there. Mm-hmm. When they did that Rich Gang thing, it just only made <laughs> sense. <laughs> I went to swap. It just only made sense for me to just to glue it together. It was already glued together, but I just put the... The rap on it. Yeah. And then we get lifestyle, and then it's so big, and then you know what I'm See, that's what I'm clubs. talking about. When you getting records like Lifestyle, and you seeing Thug and Quan going crazy at that time, and you realize that not only are they moving the culture forward, but they leading it now. So it's like, okay, you go from being a part to being a leader in this thing. What was that experience like, looking left to right, thinking, okay, Thug, I remember when you ain't had nothing, Rich Homie, I remember when you ain't had nothing, and now y'all are dominating this music industry, and I'm in this thing doing what I do. Um, I just look at it as, that's what I go back to saying when I was homeless, I always said, mm. God just be yeah. already in my mind supposed to be here. Yeah. So every moment, that I do in life, even being here with you today. Yeah. It just always felt like I was supposed to be here. Facts. No crazy, no no crazy talk. I just always, in my mind, if you met anybody who went to school with me in middle school, high school, I was already swamped yeah. back then. I was well known back then in school, probably on the negative stuff. Yeah. But. <laughs> Raise the hell. I was well Maybe known. Like I was well known. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? I just always. Seeing myself differently, I was I was raised in a different house. My brothers from New York, everybody. I'm raised in a different home. That's right. My oldest brother talk that talk to me as a little like, oh, you gonna be this? Ooh. Yeah. So he pushed that upon me. So I'm going into the world the way he said I supposed to be in the world. Come on now, being able to be around folks like baby, were you able to pick his brain and get game being from there. him? Being there, just, if you ever been in a room to be in there, it's life changing. Talk to me. The air is different. I tell everybody the air is different. Once Birdman and Slim walks in the room, the air is purified. They, they purify the air. Big, if you haven't been in the room with billionaires, the air is purified. By God. Man, double salute to Birdman. Gave me an opportunity of a life. I've been rocking with him for six years. I talked to Birdman for six years straight, probably once a week, twice yeah. a week. No cap. I always communicate with me. Always communicate with me. I'm in, out of town. If I'm in Miami, LA, whatever. Yeah. I just pull up on him, and he always said, "It's gonna be your time." Mm-hmm. Just be patient. Yeah. So today we're here at something he was already mentally having a plan for me. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was. I just kept working. Yeah. Keeping the brand going. Mm-hmm. And now we're here, man. What is it like waiting your time, though, Swamp? Because everybody can't do that, okay? You know, it's so many folks that are just going ahead and shoot themselves in the foot and be like, you know what, you know what, I'm going to lose my mind today because it ain't happening now. I wasn't in a a position where I needed to rush. Okay. I'm already on radios, radio stations. I'm DJing. I'm already in the flame. I'm doing parties and shows. And I got a relationship with them. Facts. So most people become impatient because maybe they don't have that connection with somebody who can help them, or maybe they haven't, they're not doing anything else besides nothing but their dream. I know a lot of people only do the dream. Yeah. I'm only gonna rap. Yeah. I'm only gonna cook. I'm only yeah. gonna host. I'm only Come gonna on. do this. I was doing that and I'm doing parties and I'm doing other things too. To exactly. bring different type of income so I could pace I can be patient. Yeah. I can be patient. Now if I was sitting home doing nothing, then I'd probably be impatient. 
And he always extending his hand. Mm -hmm. The pandemic hit, he was the first person to call me. Come on now. My daughter, he was the first. Yo, whatever you need. No, I'm good, Stunner. No, 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 listen to me. Whatever you need, I got you. Come on. my daughter, he personally called me. Like, no paperwork. Like, do you need, I got whatever you need. No paperwork, whatever you need, I got you. When he talked to me, that's what he said. Well, you good? You need anything? You straight? Like, not on no rap. We always had that relationship. What does that do for you when Stunner calls and he shows that kind of love, man, to make sure that his folks is all good, man? Man, growing up, watching them guys put that work in, listening to the stigma of everything everybody else had to say. Come on now. <laughs> all the stuff they had to say, and then I just sit back and... Even when I go to barbershops, anything, they always have something to say. And I just look at it and be like, man, you don't even know who in the room. <laughs> Come on. When you talk about people, you never know who's sitting in the room. When exactly. You talk about people. So I know what he's doing for me and the world sees. Yeah. Now, but they still, you know what I mean? Back then they didn't. Because he's not voice. He don't voice his opinion. He don't have no feelings on the internet. He don't do none of that. So yeah. if somebody has something to say, he just let it say. He let it be not, just let it say. He just let it ride. Somebody can say the worst thing to him about him on the internet, and he's let it ride. I have nothing to say. Yeah. I just sit back and be like, oh, what? Out of all of your time being around all of these major figures and stuff like that, Swamp, what is the best advice that you receive during out this time that you can share with another DJ that's coming into the game, man? Man, never stop doing what you're doing. Because a lot of people get confused when – Say I'm signed to Cash Money, mm -hmm. Republic Universal. I'm signed to this label. That means most people would stop doing the flame and the radio and podcasts. Come on. Because they're caught up in the hype. Come on. But that's not what they want from me. They want me to still be Swamp Izzo. Come on. That's how I got to them, being Swamp Izzo. So that's the mistake a lot of people make. So I noticed a lot of rappers get signed and then they go, be, no, nah, you still got to go do what you was doing to get to this point. Exactly. Keep that, be continuous with that. Yeah. That's the key to it. So I would tell anybody, if you're in a situation, I don't care if you're working for Coca-Cola or whatever, do what they, do what you was doing for Coca-Cola to come sign you, any company. Exactly. Not plugging them. No plug Coca-Cola. No, <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> no, nah, but don't stop. Don't stop to be high TV. Exactly. No matter who come. I can't do that, Swamp. I can't do that. So now, Swamp DJ for Gucci though. What was that like being on the road with Gucci Mane? Gucci, man. Gucci. Gucci is a whole other animal. <laughs> Gucci, Gucci, what did I say about Gucci? I love Gucci to death, man. Gucci's the only person that I ever DJ for that it was saying, This is the show we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And when he get on stage, he's throwing a chip. He, he grabs the mic, he's, he's a totally different guy. He's yeah. a super businessman. Yeah. When you talking to him one-on-one, -on -one, what you see out to the world is not Gucci Man. Yeah. He's intelligent is Crazy. Yeah. Talks to you. Like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do these two songs, Swamp. When he touched on that stage, he grabbed a mic. He's a different animal. So he wanted to do 30 songs. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I don't even. <laughs> I ain't got nothing, I ain't got up, nothing ready. Yeah. yeah. So I always go through that with Goo Wop. Shout out to Goo Wop, man. What was your most memorable night DJing on the road, though, Swamp? Probably was Iraq, Afghanistan. Mm. DJing from where I came from. Talk to me. Um, I don't know if you, I know a lot of people use the word homeless. Yeah. But homeless to me is nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm not from Georgia, so I don't have nobody to turn to. If it goes all bad for me, I have, at this point in time, I grew enough relationships. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't know didn't nobody. I couldn't turn nobody. Cousin, aunt, niece, nephew, I can't turn nobody. Homeless is, you're there, that's where you're going to be. Yeah. You have to go to your nearest state where you run. So that's homeless. To being on the stage DJ in Afghanistan. That's being able to travel with DJing and stuff like that, man. Did you feel like DJing would take you around the world? In my mind, yes. And what is it like when that fantasy and that dream becomes a reality, man? Because you know, so many people have these goals and these dreams. And like you say, Folks thinking that they dreaming too big sometimes. But when that fantasy starts to touch that reality, man, what is that experience like? That's, when probably, you that's probably the worst thing I ever experienced in life. What? Is, is living a dream. Uh, 
That's probably the worst feeling, Ivan, because I had this dream for 20 years that I'm going to do this big stage, 50, <laughs> 60,000 people, and then I did it like 50 times. So if you ever dreamed of something that sounds outrageous and then you get to do it, it's kind of like, you can go and jump off a building. I, I, <laughs> I did what I set I, out yeah, to do. Yeah, I did what I set out to do in my mind. So then now I'm, I'm you swamp. Like I tell everybody, keep dreaming because I had to go back to sleep. Damn. I had to go try to find another dream. So what was that new dream? After you hit them 50,000 audience crowds and stuff like that, where did you have to fix your mind to go? Now I want to I wanna try to be the biggest DJ in the world. Yes, sir. That's where I'm at with my dream. The biggest. Not here. Mm -hmm. Not here. Not even here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the biggest. My God. What is I it? I know I can't probably top that in my dream. If if I do that, I'm jumping off a <laughs> quote me. If I do that, I'm jumping off a building today. Oh man. But that's just where I'm going. Mentally, like I'm just trying to What all do you gotta do to be the biggest in your mind? Branding. Uh-huh. Marketing. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Really marketing, really structuring the brand mm -hmm. to make it a household name. 